Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And now we're going to Spain. Actually we're going to go to Humilla, Humilla probably, not Humilla, Humilla. Man, I really should look at that a little more closely. Humilla. Now this is, um, well, first of all, let's all do the rinse and then we'll show you the label. We're a little bit behind schedule. Alright, so this is the uh, where is the vintage? Is there a vintage for this? I don't know. This might be non-vintage. 2009. Wow, dude, really? It's like buried way right here in the back label. Nowhere else. I'm assuming that is a vintage because it says 2009. Alright, so the 2009 uh, Tarima Tarima Monastrel, uh from Humia, Spain. Humia is in the southeast quadrant of Spain. Um, it's uh, according to the Book of Knowledge. It uh, has uh, a continental climate, which means it's hot summers, cold winters. Uh, it is near the Mediterranean Sea, so it kind of tempers it, and it says it's pretty arid. So, um, if I remember, you know, which a lot of Spain is a lot like Texas, honestly. So. I'm going to say it's probably not like living in Houston where it's really humid and rains a lot, but um, it's uh, pretty dry there. All right, so $7.99 from Specs, and um, it is manufactured, or it's, it's made, well, the, the actual produced and bottled or bottled by Bodegas Tarima, um, but it's uh, from the uh, Jorge Odonia's um, group of wines even though if you go to their website you don't see it on there but it has their logo on the back all right so let's check it out all right so what i'm getting out of this is kind of some plum maybe hints of chocolate A bit of alcohol in the nose. I don't know if it's really high out. Oh, 15%. What do you know? Well, from a hot area of the, of the world, it's not unusual to have high alcohol percentages. But really, just kind of that plum, almost raisiny. So the fruit was probably really ripe when they picked it. All right, let's take this. Taste it. Had a little too much at first. Um, tastes like Texas. You know, um, we've got that woodsy, you know, a lot of wood on that. Um, but you feel like you're outside at a big pit barbecue. Okay, there's that barbecue word again. Um, the plum flavors are a little more muted. But I, I feel like I get that smokiness, not that smoke bomb, but the smokiness. Maybe some cherry aspect to it, um, but definitely a lot of wood. Moderate tannins, it really hit the upper part of my mouth, the gums up there, but it didn't really coat everything else. Um, a decent finish, it's not a super, super long finish, but it didn't like disappear on you.
maybe even a bit of raspberry to it. Pretty good, I like it. A lot of wood to it, so that can kind of be off-putting to some people. Um, with the right food combination, I think this would work. Obviously, barbecue. I'm a big fan of that. Um, but uh, you know, just just a good steak with it, maybe a pot roast, a good stew, that type of stuff. Something that will kind of stand up to the wine. It's it's a full-bodied wine. Um, it's got a lot of flavors going on. It's not it's not heavy in the sense of of that it's um, really heavy on, on, on the mouth with the tannins and really thick, but it's full body in the sense of it's got a lot of flavor to it and it needs something to kind of be able to do it, you know, be able to stand toe to toe with it. This is something, this is not a, this is, this is not a wine that you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to sit on the porch and drink a little bit. No, it's, it's, um, man, this is, uh, this is, you know, Tim the Toolman Taylor type of wine. Man, how many of you know that one? All right, so, um, yeah, pretty darn good, if I say so myself. Uh, score, I like the wine. I think it might be a little tad overpowering. But like I say, if you pair it with the right food, it's going to, I think it'll pair really well with it. But by itself, it might be kind of a little bit much. Um, I'd be really interested to pair this up with some stuff. Um, definitely going to not try not to drink this wine just by itself. Just try to drink it, you know, with anything I'm eating. Um, that might pair well with it. Wow, now I'm starting to see. I love, this is why I love wine. It's not even been 10 minutes in the glass and I'm already getting like caramel. Just a hint of it, like it's kind of gone now. It's softening a little more. Decant this wine. It'll help soften that that really woodsy taste to it. Um, it's starting to soften a bit. It's starting to become not as powerful, which is great. You know, that's one of these things, especially wines like this, they're so powerful right out of the bottle that you're kind of taken aback by it. But once you let them sit for a little bit, let them breathe, let them interact with the oxygen, they get much better. So, all right, so um, that's going to do it. Buy the wine if you can find it. Oh, um, 90. I give it a 90. So, yeah. No, 92. Remember, trying to not be too hard on wines. 92. I think it's, I think it's pretty darn good. Um, especially now, you know, you know why I get those extra two points? Because it starts softening up on me. So, that's good. On wines, that's good. Other things, not so much. All right. Yeah, really good. Oh, I want to read what the back said. Um, licorice, chocolate, and hint of dark violets. The chocolate, but none of that other stuff. I didn't really get the licorice at all. I knew there was something weird about it, so I read the back label, but uh, I couldn't remember what it was. Licorice? I don't know. It'd be a real stretch for me to say there's any licorice in there, as in stretching the truth. I don't get any of that. All right, stop by the website, leave comments if you had this before. If not, try it. Let me know you had it. Let me know you're going to try it. What do you think about it? Friend me up. Click the links as far as a uh, friend. Friend me up and dig thing. You know, should we share it? Share it on dig too. I think you can do that. Stumble upon. Uh, iTunes, you can subscribe to the podcast. Hit the donate button, donate a couple ducats. Donate the $7.99 plus tax, so eight, whatever, to buy into the bottle. And uh, that's going to do it. We'll see everyone again next time.